Hi, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, kefir. More specifically, water kefir. You've probably seen in the grocery aisle by the yogurt and stuff and the, the dairy products, the, the, the bottles of, of, of kefir, of milk kefir. What we're gonna make today is something similar to that, only a probiotic beverage that doesn't have any dairy in it. It's just strictly made with water and some sugar, some sweeteners, some fruit juice. And, you know, I know you're probably trying to uh, avoid a lot of sugar in your diet, but the, the sugar isn't for you to eat, it's for the bacteria and the yeast to eat. Well, I'll get into all that in a minute, but basically what we're doing is just creating a, a probiotic drink. I mean, you've seen the probiotic drinks, you can, well, you can buy this product for, I don't know, what is this, about $4 a bottle? Um, I'm not gonna be able to afford that after a week. This I can make for pennies a day and literally have a constant supply of it just by following a real simple procedure. And I can show you how to do it. Let's see what it takes to make water kefir. To start out, you're gonna have to get some what's called water kefir grains, or they're gonna, they're gonna come, you can buy a mail order, they'll probably come dehydrated. And your first step will be to rehydrate them. So you'll make up some sugar water. This is a jar made by Kefirco, specifically for making kefir. You can make water kefir or milk kefir in it. We're making water kefir today. But I really like this jar, and you'll see why in a little bit. To get started on your water kefir, fill up a jar. This is about a liter and a half. It's a little bit over a quart with some good, clear, clean water, filtered water. You don't want any chlorine in here, just like some of the other fermentation we've been doing. You don't want anything that's gonna kill the grains, that's kill the bacteria and the yeast. So, room temperature water, and some, just some white sugar. To make about, like I said, about a quart of kefir, figure I'm gonna do three heaping teaspoons. Just a table, uh, just a simple, you know, a spoon. You don't need anything fancy here. And, our favorite new grains. Stick them in there, stir everything together. And when you first get your grains, it's not going to work very well. I'll, I'll promise you that I've had, talked to people and they said they got grains in the mail and really did not have a lot of luck with this. It's, you just kind of need to have some persistence and get these guys going. They will work, give it time. What you're gonna do is do what I just did and then just let it sit. Let, leave this just like your kombucha, like your other ferments, about room temperature. Water kefir can actually go a little cooler. Figure 65, 75 degrees is your, is your target range. Let this sit for about two days and then it'll look like this. And after about two days, the grains have all reconstituted. They're gotten, they've swollen, gotten sort of puffy. They're still very fragile. I mean, don't go in there and beat the daylights out of them. But what you're gonna wanna do is just take off your top. You can use a strainer. You don't, like I said, you don't need the fancy jar. You can just get a good nylon mesh strainer and strain off all of the water from the first night. And then repeat the process. Again, fill up your jar with clean water, uh, filtered water. Put in your three spoons of sugar. Stir the sugar in. Put your grains back in. And then leave it to ferment another 48 hours, two days. So we're gonna keep repeating this process of straining off the grains. We're keeping the grains. Remember, we're trying to invigorate these grains, make, you know, build up our bacterial colony, build up our yeast colony in the grains. And eventually, you can taste this. I mean, you can taste it all along, but it's just gonna be kind of sugary water for the first five times, probably, depending on, on how active your grains are when you get them. But do this a couple of times, and then, you know, that maybe on the fifth day, taste the sugar water when you first make it as kind of a baseline, and then wait a day, taste it a little bit. You should notice a little bit of a change, but then after about 48 hours, taste it again, and I think you'll find that it tastes a little funky, a little, you know, it's fermented, so you get that sort of fermented taste, but it's not sweet anymore. You'll lose all that sweetness because, like I said, the yeast and the bacteria eat all of the sugar and leave you probiotics, which is where we were going with this all along. So we're finally getting, so once you taste it and it's not sweet, what was that sweetness has been eaten up by the yeast and the bacteria and become your probiotics. Now you've got a probiotic drink. Now you're back to what I've got with my probiotic drink. 
this you can just enjoy as it is. You can add some ice cubes and drink it, use it as the base for a smoothie, or Another fun thing to do with kefir is carbonate it. What you can do is after your 48 hours of fermentation time is up and you're pouring off your kefir to drink for the day, maybe don't drink it like this. Grab a bottle with a nice tight fitting lid, a swing top bottle, and fill that bottle with your finished kefir. And then add some juice. Add something with a little bit of sugar. Remember the sugar that we were stirring into the into the fermenter here? That was feeding the yeast, feeding the bacteria. We're gonna do the same thing here. This is done. This kefir has been fermenting for 24 hours, 48 hours, and we're gonna let that continue to ferment, but instead of fermenting just raw sugar water, we'll get a bit something nice to drink, some 100% juice, and cap this up. And leave this to sit on the on the bench for 48 hours, just like we were fermenting this for 48 hours. Let this ferment for 48 hours. Pop it in the fridge for you know until it chills, and then you can drink this, and you'll have a nice carbonated beverage. But I think the real trick to kefir is keeping it alive and keeping these grains strong, healthy, and happy. And the best way to do that is to feed them. Yeah, I said feed them sugar. Mm, that'll work. But you can do better than that. You can feed them, we were feeding them just plain white granulated sugar. I like to alternate. So maybe one day I'll make it with plain white granulated sugar. Then I'll pour off my kefir, bottle some, drink some, and then to refill my jar, I'll fill my jar up with filtered water and then use brown sugar. Put, you know, just regular uh, brown sugar in it. Or maybe some organic cane sugar. And just use something different every time. You can use plain white sugar every time, but the kefir grains really do a lot better if you vary their diet. Just like feeding your children, you're taking care of this little <laughs> organism here. Give it a varied diet. Give it different kinds of sugar. Feed it, uh, put some uh, lemon in with it. One of the features of the, of the kefir co is it comes with this nifty little fruit juicer here. So you can take your favorite kind of citrus and just juice it right into the jar. You can do this, feed the, uh, the grains a little bit of juice once in a while. They'll have, obviously, the juice on it when you do this. But then, when you pour off your kefir to drink, now you've got a nice lemon kefir. It's not carbonated, but it was simple to do. Like I said, I try to vary how I refill my kefir jar every time. So, clean fresh water, maybe put in some figs. Something about figs, I was reading in a couple of different sources online that if you buy figs and just toss a fig in and just keep a fig in your fermenter along with, oh, your three spoonfuls of sugar, there's something on figs that kefir grains really like. So if you can, I just bought these at the market. You can, they will come, these were in the produce section packaged in this sort of cellophane. Um, they're kind of hard to find, but they are pretty common. They're not, you know, a real mystery to locate. Um, but put, keep a fig in your fermenting jar. But then eventually, as you go through this process, as you're fermenting your kefir grains, that they eventually, they multiply. They, I mean, we started with just a tiny little bit and now we've gotten nearly half a jar of the things. So, pop the top and you can strain off your kefir. And get another jar going. When I do this, I'm adding about two ounces of grains, you know, the fully hydrated, you know, completely viscous grains in here. So to get, this is what, a, a quart jar? So you know, once your grains start to develop, you can start to divide them and get a second jar. So go, maybe, you know, one day you, you do this jar and that takes two days, but then this one is already on its first day. So as the second day comes along, you can kind of leapfrog your kefir and have lots of kefir to drink or give this to a friend and get a, a friend fermenting kefir. Maybe you have a problem and all your, your kefir grains die and you can go back to your, your buddy and hopefully he can trade back to you because he's got them, got them still growing. 
some other little tricks for your, your newfound buddies here, your kefir grains. A little bit of molasses once in a while is a, just a special treat for your, for your grains. Literally take your spoon and just dip the tip of the spoon in and then you can stir just the tiniest little bit of molasses into your sugar water as you start to ferment. After you, you know, you take your, your kefir out and you're starting another batch, Starting just, you just want the water to barely be, be colored. Um, just any kind of good uh, molasses. Another thing that works really well, baking soda. If you find that your grains just aren't really thriving, they're not doing well, they seem to be maybe getting, like if you feel them and they're just breaking apart and they're getting a little brittle, they're probably wearing out. One of the things that happens as that sugar water ferments, it creates an acidic environment and the acidic environment is not good for the grains and what you want to do is try to just neutralize that again just the tiniest little bit of baking soda stirred into your kefir and let them I wouldn't do this every time I would do this you know maybe every third time or so just a sixteenth of a teaspoon of baking soda and I think you'll find that the it really invigorates the grains it neutralizes the acid that they're creating and, and kind of gives them a fresh start on on the liquid that they're living in and just as a final note if you find that you're just <laughs> getting sick of drinking kefir and this whole you know two-day process one-day process of, of fermenting and straining and mixing and making more and drinking and you just need to cool it for a while on the kefir. You can store these. You can, I actually took mine and put them in the food dehydrator and dried them out, just real low temperature, 85 degrees for about 12 hours, and they look just like when they came in the mail. Take this in a, keep it in the freezer. If you don't have a dehydrator, you don't have to. That's an optional step. You can literally just take some of your grains, pop them in a, in a Ziploc, date it, label it, seal it shut, pop that in the freezer and they'll keep in the freezer for six months a year I haven't had a problem with this they, they seem to like I said you have to revitalize them you have to get them going with those initial couple of nights where you're not actually drinking the uh, kefir so th this is a, a great way to just you know put on hold your, your kefir project and just keep these in the freezer for some time and not have to worry about you know, buying kefir grains again I know they can be a little pricey if you're just looking for a short-term storage for your kefir, you just you know want to maybe a week or two. What you can do is strain your kefir off and make your sugar water like you usually do. But instead of fermenting it on the counter for two days, put the whole thing in the refrigerator. Leave it in there for as long as you want. Probably a couple of weeks. I would say you know two or three weeks maximum before you want to strain it and re-add the sugar water. Um, and then put it back in the fridge. So you kind of have to keep in the back of your head that this needs to get refreshed every, no, let's call it two weeks, if you're gonna put it in the fridge. What you put in the freezer, just leave it out down there and you know, you pop it out, thaw it out whenever you're ready. Don't put it in the microwave to thaw it out. <laughs> just thaw it out in some warm water, some warm sugar water. And that's everything that you need to know about making kefir. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you're looking for a Kefir Co. jar like I've been using here in this video, click the links below and you can pick one up on Amazon. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next Thursday night.